Hello everyone, this is Mitch, and welcome to episode 6 of Kerbal Space Program Let's Play. So, before we start anything, I want to show you I've made some changes to the difficulty options. So, I felt like we were getting too much money and too much science this early on, and I don't want to finish the Tech 3 uh, this early. So, I have reduced the science rewards from 80% to 50%. The fund rewards to 50% from a 100%, and I have increased the funds penalties to 100% from 50%. And did I make any other changes? I don't think so. Alright. So we are getting closer to going uh, interplanetary, and so for this we will want to start to set up a communications network. And for this we're going to need um, decent satellites. So, in order to do this, I am going to unlock this science node to get the uh, better solar panels. I'm going to unlock this node to get a better probe core and a useful antenna, along with a small stack decoupler. I am going to unlock this node for the small fuel tank and the small fuel engine. This one for the larger engines. And I think that's it for now. There's nothing else we really need to set up the satellites. So let's start with that. So what's the plan here? Basically, I want this to be a one-off for now. I want us to be done with um, satellites in Kerbin's sphere of influence and you can check here basically Kerbin's sphere of influence is 84 million meters and Minmus has 2.2 million meters sphere of influence and it's orbiting at 46 million meters that means that we have about anything above roughly 50 million meters from Kerbin is space where we can orbit above every other celestial body. And that's important because I also want to cover uh, the celestial bodies within Kerbal's, uh, Kerbin's sphere of influence. And in order to do this, we need to have signal bouncing back from behind uh, these moons, uh, the moon and Minmus, basically. So I want to put my satellites above the orbit of Minmus so we can bounce signal back there. And yeah, that's it. And I want four of them to make sure we constantly have line of sight on at least one or two satellites, just in case the MUN eclipses one of these satellites. So we are going to get to work on a launch system for four satellites at once with a lot of delta V to be able to bring it into very high orbit of Kerbin. So let's start right away. We are going to start with a probe core. Uh, in this case, we are going to use the hex because it has the better Kerbinet access and better SAS abilities, that kind of stuff. So I just said a hex and I use a Hutco, a Octo. Yeah, X. All right, so what do we want on our little probe? We're going to want a battery, uh, electrical, so a small battery. We are going to want two small fuel tanks and a small engine. So if we raise the uh, altitude in Kerbal Engineer, we can see this is going to give us a lot of delta V. So this little satellite right now can move a lot. Of course, we're going to need the new antennas. I'm going to put two to make sure I have maximum signal strength, even if I'm bouncing between satellites. This looks pretty flush with the top of the satellite, which is good. I can lower it a tiny bit. There we go. So two antennas. These are heavy enough that this lowers the uh, delta V by quite a bit. 
then I'm going to put a thermometer just in case we get contracts to get science from space around Kerbin. This is going to let us do that at basically whenever we want at will. I'm going to put a Kerbal Engineer piece uh, on top which I'm going to offset into the probe because I'm going to need Kerbal Engineer's data to set these satellites into a useful and really stable orbit and also in an orbit where the uh, distance between each satellite is going to be a uh, constant. So this is one satellite. Was there anything else we needed? Oh, of course, we are going to need the solar panels two of them and I put them like this because I'm basically going to turn uh, the satellites so it's perpendicular to the Sun and these solar panels can rotate along this axis so no matter our position around the Sun these uh, solar panels will always always be able to rotate and get charge from the Sun they'll always be exposed so I think that's one satellite yeah but we're going to need more so here's how we're going to do this and save a lot of time we're going to put the stack separator on the bottom and we are going to reroute this part there we go so now we can move the whole thing by clicking on the set on the stack separator and well first of all we're going to stick a new stack separator on top and now clicking on the engine holding the alt key I'm going to left click and it's going to copy the whole satellite and I can put it on top and I can do this again and one more time oops clicking on the top satellite because I don't want to copy two satellites so there we go, if we zoom out, we can see we have four satellites on top of each other. We don't need this stack separator. So four satellites, so we can make a square around Kerbin, which I'll explain later. But now we need to send those into orbit. So the first thing we're going to do is actually put a command pod at the bottom. And the reason I'm doing this is that we have no satellites currently in orbit of Kerbin. And so I don't want to, um, you know, not have signal strength and not be able to uh, make the uh, adjustment burns on the satellites because yeah, that would be bad. Like, it's possible we wouldn't have a signal when we want to burn because we have no relays right now. So I'm going to actually use a command pod with a pilot to set up the initial uh, satellites. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the reaction wheels off right now on the satellites. Uh, where is it? Toggle torque. Just because I don't want any wobble or any torsion to be applied to the ship. I'm going to go exclusively with the command pod because anyways, these have very little uh, torque but they're still going to try to wobble if I don't do this. And we are also going to link them structurally to the pod because this is a spaghetti and this is a lot of junctions and I don't want it to wobble. Now you might think, but you've got stack separators in between and you've got a struts now going all the way to the top. Well, yeah, but the struts are going to disconnect when you decouple anything here basically so it's going to be all right but it's going to keep it stable while we fly out and before we launch the satellites so this is looking good we're going to need parachutes on the pod because we want to bring the pilot back so i'm going to put two drogue chutes and one big parachute there and the basic part for a where is it payload I believe did we not unlock this part I 
think I forgot to unlock a part, so I'm going to save this, leave, and head to the R&D center. Find this, yeah, advanced construction we're going to need because we want the uh, protective shell, the fairings. And, you know, the extra nose cones and everything else is going to be useful, so we're going to unlock that right away. There we go, go back to the vehicle assembly, and resume construction. So, in the payload part, now we have the uh, fairing here, and you can see if I can just make this smaller. So, it's 0 0.075 tons, so it's really light. So even if I put this without a decoupler, this is going to be fine. Like, it's not going to weigh the uh, capsule down so much that we cannot return it to the surface. And it's pretty heat resistant as well, so we can just leave it like that, save it apart. So go for the uh, smoothest, but still the largest size for the base of the fairing, because the antennas are pretty big. And just cover everything up till roughly there. The, do the antennas clip? No, they don't. So I'm going to make this, I'm going to try to make this a little smoother for uh, aerodynamic reasons. And like this, basically. So this is our payload. And we have the parachutes on the capsule. So all good there. I can actually take the monopropellant off the capsule. And now we can put a decoupler at the base of this because we don't want to carry anything else back down to the surface. Zoom back in again and this is now a pretty heavy thing and we want to uh, be able to bring it way out of uh, Kerbin's sphere of influence. So we are going for, hold on, structural this part here for aerodynamics reasons and we're going to put a really big tank there and we're going to use a poodle engine. Now if we look at this again this means our top stage has over 3,000 units of delta V so hopefully we can burn to um, high orbit, circularize once we get there to get a circle high orbit around Kerbin and this should be enough as well to uh, burn us back down to um, the surface of Kerbin, basically, and save our pilot. So this we want to bring into orbit. So now this is getting really, really heavy. So we're going to need some serious lifting power for the ascent stage. I'm going to uh, bring this up. And we can use another big tank, a smaller one. And the skipper, which is our biggest engine so far. And as we can see, the skipper is... It's alright. It can lift off, but it's going to need boosters for the uh, initial ascent. And let's start figuring out the staging. So this decoupler goes with this engine. This decoupler should go almost last. So we're going to move it up. Parachutes, obviously. The engines on the um, satellites don't really matter for staging right now. What does matter is the order in which we decouple every satellite, and we can also re reduce the force on every stack decoupler because we don't want to kick the uh, satellites too far when we separate them. So, like this. Oops, selected the engine instead. 10% ought to be enough. Now we want them to decouple in order and we might as well release the fairing the moment we decouple this part as well. And now let's see. Make this more compact. We need to first eject the top satellite. So here is this one, I'm pretty sure, yep, so this is good. This one goes next, am I right? 
Yup. This one goes after. Then we have the final satellite and we have the capsule. We want the capsule to be last just before the parachutes and we are actually going to create another stage for the drogue chutes like this. So right now, first stage, we have the skipper burning. Then we get rid of the fairing, we get rid of the skipper. And we fire the poodle engine. Then when we get into the desired position, we're going to launch the top satellite, the next satellite, the next, and the next again. Then we can burn to a re-entry trajectory, get rid of the engine deploy the drug chutes, and then we have finally the big parachute. So looking good. So we're still going to need a bit of a help to uh, get this into orbit, so we're going to set up boosters. So for we need to be careful, we cannot uh, exceed 140 tons. This is going to be the main limitation here. So let's go roughly like this use these fuel tanks make sure they're fairly well centered let's do this put some nose cones for aerodynamics and put some we're actually going to go with the reliance because the skipper has the ability to uh, gimbal so it's okay if the boosters cannot gimbal it's fine and now we're going to fire these engines at the same time as the skipper. And we get just enough thrust to weight ratio for it to be uh, relatively a you know decent ascent. Then we get rid of the boosters and that's it. And now we're going to use as well, hold on, I'm going to offset these to a higher position. So it's closer to the skipper. Looking good, maybe a little bit more. Like this, almost flush. One more. Good enough. So we're going to set up fuel lines here to maximize our delta V. So now we get, you know, like almost 3000. This gains us a good 400 and probably more because the center stage will not have used any fuel when it separates. We're going to put struts just to avoid any wobble on the boosters. Like this and like this maybe up to the fairing yeah there we go oh, let's make this a little bit more straight like that looks better and so right now we have a almost 7000 delta v rocket this gets us near orbit. It's okay that it won't get us quite into orbit because that makes less debris in uh, in low carbon orbit. But this stage should have plenty to uh, finish burning into orbit and also getting us there. And we have the four satellites and everything, so that's pretty much it. This is going to be our satellite mission. So if that helped you or if you like, please leave a like and subscribe. Comments and feedback in the section below. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.